Wow. Mr. Bunnell, Hearts Academy Film and Photo Class, recording again on Inkscape. I just wanted to go over a couple of uh, super basics. Uh, works for everybody. So uh, we're, we want to do a different orientation for the background. So that's accomplished by going into Document Properties. And let's see where the window opens. The window opens off screen, so let me drag it down so you can see it. Um, we're in letter format. Sometimes the, the default for, for Inkscape is A4, which is a European format, but you can have it default to letter if you want. But what we want today is to go down to Video HD 1080p, because we might want to use this for a background or some, some sort of special effect in, in filmmaking or, or in DaVinci Resolve. Um, so we're going to do that ratio and then change it to landscape format. Display units, pixels, because we're going to be working in pixels because it's going to be a video background or uh, something to do with video. Um, so it's going to be uh, pixels. You want to change display units to pixels. And, and this orientation might be a little bit different based on the operating system you're using. If in Ubuntu, it's going to be, this is going to look different, but have all the same features. Um, let's close this out. You can leave it open if you have two monitors, like I do. You can close it out or leave it in the background. OK, now the, the background is now that um, video HD uh, ratio. If you hit the number five on your keyboard, it will zoom in to your work area. And the first thing you want to do is white is too bright. So I'm going to change the background color to something else by drawing a rectangle using the rectangle tool. Um, then I'm going to change the color of the rectangle. And down here are all the swatches the easy to use. If you use the scroll wheel on your mouse, you can scroll through a bunch of different swatches. I'm going to pick a dark, darker blue. Um, go back to the selection tool. And up here are the XY coordinates. The XY coordinates of the background are upper left hand corner is 0, 0. X goes across the top, Y goes top to bottom. So the, and the reference point of, the, of any object is the upper left hand corner of that object. Um, and I was doing a little research. So th uh, there's no easy way to change the reference corner in Inkscape. In, in, um, if you're using Adobe Illustrator, there's a way to change it to any of these um, nine reference points. So upper left, middle, upper right, center, 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 and so forth and so on. But here, not so much. Um, so the, upper, the reference corner is there. So I'm going to change this x to 0. And you'll notice when I hit tab, it's going to move the the box over to the left, the reference, the X reference is zero left. And I hit zero again, and I'm using tab because it works so much faster. If you learn the keyboard commands, the, your work goes so much faster. You'll spend, spend less time on the computer. Um, so I hit tab again, and then 1920, and since we changed, you can see if you change your display units here. If it's, this says pick PX for pixel, you changed your display units. If it says MM for millimeters, it, it wasn't changed. And the reason I say that is if you, if you don't change it, it says MM and you put 1920 millimeters, the box will travel on beyond the, your workspace by quite a lot. And now 1080 is the height. And there's our background um, filling up our space. What I want to try and avoid is now I'm going to start drawing things on the background. If I grab the background and move it, it will move. And I, Control-Z always to undo whatever I did wrong. So I'm going to go over to Layers and Objects. You can actually go to Object, and it says layer, Layers and Objects. And here's the rectangle I just made. And if I mouse over, so this is the layer, the, the layer we're working in, and this is the rectangle. And as you add things, they will stack up in this Layers and Objects section. So if I mouse over that rectangle, there's a little padlock that appears. And I click that padlock. And now I can't, I can't move. It's not selected. I can't move it. If your rectangle is selected in the layers and objects, I can still change the color of that background. Oh, maybe I can't. Nope. When you first lock it, it works. But um, it's locked. I can't change the color. I can't do anything to it. It is now the background. So making a part of this per current assignment for, for this uh, basic one is making rectangles, squares, circles, and and ellipses. A rectangle, I'm going to change the color to something other than blue so we can see it. Um, come on, let's go. 
So there's my little, little yellow rectangle. Um, if I just click and drag, let's see, there we go. A little slower than recording this screen so it's slowing down my computer. Um, if I click and drag, it drags a rectangle. If I hold the control key while I'm dragging, it will snap to a different ratios, but will snap to a rectangle if I hold it at about 45 degree angle from the starting point. So there's a perfect square. Same thing for ellipses. Um, I can drag freehand, it will make any sort of shape. If I hold the control key, it will make a perfect circle. All right, um, that's a couple of basics there. Now the, the other part is quick basic is if I select this rectangle, for example, and I go to object, fill in stroke, fill refers to the inside color. Let's see, it's not opening up right away. Let's go back and, oh, there we go. A little bit slow. Um, fill in stroke, fill refers to the inside of the, co the inside color Stroke refers to the boundary around the outside of the object. Right now, stroke style controls the width of it, and width is right now zero. So if I change that to five, now my object has a five pixel, now let's make that 10. A 10 pixel, so you can see it. A 10 pixel border, and we'll make it have a darker color so we can see there's the, well, let's see. Um, let's make it green so it stands out a little more. There's the background as I'm recording at school. Um, so there's my border and my object. <coughs> and you can change the borders and objects and, and do all sorts of fun stuff that way. All right. Uh, the reason we want a little bit of a stroke thickness there is now we're going to use this uh, this tool, it's called the, you know, you mouse over everything, the little tool turns up. Pen tool, you can draw Bezier curves and straight lines. So, two ways to use uh, this tool, you click once, that's the start of your line, and then you move your, your pen to wherever you want the next point of your line to be, and click again, and that's making straight lines with hard corners. Click, 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 click. And if I return to my origin point, it will make an object that can be filled in. So now I can click on fill, and there is that object I just made. Um, the other way to use this tool is I click once to start the line, and I click and drag, and it makes a curve. So as long as I'm dragging, it's making curved lines. If I don't drag and I just click, 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 and without dragging, it back, goes back to making hard corners and straight lines. So there is my new object, and right now the width of the line is pretty thin, so let's make that a five pixel so we can all see it. And then go to the fill and change the fill to whatever. Let's oh, click on a fill, and there is my object. One cool thing about making objects like this, if I click on this tool right here, the node tool, all the nodes on the object appear, and what that does is if I click on this node, it gives me these little handles, so I now can readjust the shape and the size of the curve, um, and this is much more smooth when I'm not recording. Um, I can readjust the size of the curve, I can move the node around, so I can really change this shape, and that's more to, like if I wanted to match this to another shape, or maybe I want this point to match up with the corner of this object, then I'll put this on the border of this circle. So um, there's lots of ways to manipulate and change your, um, change your uh, design to fit whatever you're working on. So it's, and right now I'm using the control, I'm holding the control and using the mouse scroll wheel, I can zoom in and out of, the, of my workspace. Um, so that's just a few of the basic, basic techniques in Inkscape. See you next time.